welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to paint this pretty magical fantasy landscape I'm using acrylics, mostly, well actually all heavy body acrylics today. There's lots to learn, you're going to learn color mixing, filtering, so stick around, hit subscribe, and let's begin! Okay guys, so for the first step in this painting today is preparing the canvas. Now I've got some older paintings in my gallery that I no longer uh, enjoy and maybe didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. We all have them, don't we? And what can you do with them? Well, you can paint over them and a nice underpainting is a soft gray or any shade of gray that you want. Uh, you can also do black. Um, so I've just done a really thin coat, the first step of white. I'm using Liquitex Basics white paint, titanium white. I've got one of my largest brushes here and I'm going to have my brush really wet and add a little bit of black now. So I'm just going to use a combination of black and white and I'm just going to squeeze the paint out like that, which is kind of fun. I like having fun preparing my canvases too. Why not? I make all sorts of fun swirly lines. This kind of preparation gets me in the creative mode for my painting I'm about to do. And it also creates a really fun uh, background that has a little bit more light in some areas and a little bit more shadow in areas. So if you're not sure what you wanna paint and where to start, let that be a guide for you. Instantly look at where you have darker spots and lighter spots. Concentrate on those lighter spots to be your source of light, sun rays, sunshine, maybe a moon. So I'm just gonna continue covering this up. I may speed this part up a little bit. After I'm done this part, I'm gonna make sure that the painting is completely dried off and then we'll start our next step. Okay, so for our next step, choosing the colors. Today we've got titanium white, cadmium yellow, light hue, turquoise, phthalo blue, magenta, burnt sienna, and a little Mars black. I'll just show you guys quickly the brands I'm using today because that's a question I get asked quite often. So I've got Grumbacher for my magenta, Liquitex Basics for my bright aqua green or turquoise, and for my burnt sienna I've got Arteza today. And my cadmium yellow light hue is Liquitex Basics Acrylics, Grumbacher, Phthalo Blue, and finally, you can barely see it, it's so squished on here, Windsor & Newton for my Mars Black. If I add any other colors along the way, I'll make sure that I'm letting you guys know which ones those are, and I'll also have a full list of all the colors, brushes, canvas, and links to other things below in this video in the description. Okay, the first thing I want to do is add some phthalo blue and a bit of white and start working on this sky. So I'm going to have blue slowly going into a little bit of magenta and that's going to create a light purpley color that's going to look really pretty. And we'll just work on that for now. I'm using, somebody was asking me yesterday what brush this is. This is a really cool brush. I got this one on Amazon. It's a number 10 uh, Colorantic. And yeah, it's a really great brush. It's an oval stipple or mop brush. Now you can use any blending brush that you want for this. This just happens to be the one that I'm using today. I'm not gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna try it dry first. If I need any water, I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of water. So let's start with a bit of blue. And I think I'll start here. And I'm gonna do some scumbling circles. And I'll add a little bit of white. And see, we're now going to start building up some lighter areas. I'm going to ex keep exposed some of that gray. I might have just a little bit down here that I'm going to work out of my brush. I'm envisioning a waterfall coming down into here. I am going to get just a tiny bit of water on my brush. If you're, oh, see, I've added too much water there. I should have double checked first. 
Got a few little drips there. I'll dry my brush off. So it's okay if that happens. Just quickly work it out of your brush. We've got that nice gray underneath that won't look bad if we take off some of that paint we put on. Again, I'm gonna follow down below. And I wanna start adding, without washing my brush, a little bit of magenta. I'm just gonna take that much, just a tiny bit of white. And I think I'm gonna start kind of just wiggling in. You can apply this any way that you want. I kind of like to start making wiggly fun designs with my brush when I do this. It helps me start to see some clouds and just part of my creative process. So we're creating a really deep and moody. Sorry guys, I'm gonna switch over to my right hand. My left arm is getting a little bit sore. Had a bit of a sore arm lately. Could have something to do with all the crazy painting I've been doing lately. I've been painting quite a bit. You can't help it when you love something, right? It's hard to stop doing something that you really enjoy. A little bit more white this time. I've got that blue almost worked out of my brush. So now maybe just a little, a little hint here and there. And then some soft scumbling circles. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this magenta. Accidentally hold in a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna, but I think that's gonna look really cool once we're all done. I'm gonna add some sun rays and it's gonna pick up that little bit of burnt sienna in there. I'm gonna try to do this while this is still fairly wet. And what I wanna do is switch brushes right away. I'm gonna to switch to a flat brush and I recommend you guys do that as well for painting sun rays. So like I said, while this is still a little bit wet and you can still do this if it's dry, don't worry. I'm just gonna take a little bit of my cadmium yellow, a little bit of that pinky magenta color. And let's just start by taking a little bit more water actually. You gotta have the right consistency here. And Oh, maybe right about here. Let's put one right here. I need a bit more water. And what's gonna happen, see how the color changes when we go over that blue? More water, maybe a little bit less paint in my brush this time. And we'll just go over this again. Look at all the colors. It's like a rainbow of sun rays. And I'll go out this way. And a few here, and then we'll come over top. I'm just doing this just to get a good example going for you guys here. If you wanted to do a big type of sunburst, a little bit more water. I love this one here. So pretty. That's nice because you can just keep layering over as much as you want. And then I'll just have a little bit that white, yellow, magenta, and just add a little bit down here for some water. Maybe we've got a little beach down here.
a little bit more water on my brush this time just so I can spread this one out a little bit better. Without being right in front of the camera and trying to film this so that you guys can see it, uh, it's a little bit tricky to do, a little bit challenging to get the straight lines. If I stand in front of it, you guys are not going to see what I'm doing unless I put the camera off to the side, but I don't think you guys would be able to really get the full idea of what I'm doing. You wouldn't see clearly enough. Okay, now this is going to dry a little bit and then I'll be able to come back in the center. I'm going to make the center really bright, but I do want to add a little bit more of my cadmium yellow right in here. Okay, I need a bit of water. When it starts to look patchy like that, you really don't want that because it takes away from that nice, soft feeling that you want from your, that you want your sun rays to have, right? Okay, so while that is drying, I'm gonna do a little bit more to that later on, but I wanna start coming in with my uh, mountain here. I'm gonna take, ooh, let's take a combination, magenta, blue, burnt sienna, Maybe just a little bit of black. Get a really nice deep color here. And hold my brush like this. Get quite a bit of paint. And I have it kind of leaning out here, coming up a little bit higher. Take a little bit of water on my brush. Kind of just scumble that around. And then we can have a little bit down here at the bottom as well. I'm gonna pull in a little bit of yellow without washing my brush off. Start changing this tone up a little bit. Pull and sweep. Got a little bit of white in there. That's okay, let's see what happens when we do this. Look at all the different colors you can make by adding when it's wet on wet like this. So it picks up a little bit of that blue and you get a really soft, pretty highlight right there. Then I'll scoop up that little bit of white and yellow with my brush still dirty. And I'm gonna come in here. Kind of just soften the bottom like that. I'm gonna blend these two together. Take a little bit of that white, maybe a bit of turquoise, a little bit of phthalo, and maybe we've got, just by taking the edge of our brush, kind of shaking like this, got a little bit of wave or water action happening. And then it picks up a little bit of that there on the edge. A little bit more turquoise. Create a nice bright area right here. That glowing, beautiful glowing turquoise. Start adding a little bit of just a little bit of 
light magenta to start here. Let's go like this. A little bit more white right inside. Maybe even just a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to take a different, that was just a really small mop brush, but you can use any small brush. You can even just use your pinky. Sometimes I'll just kind of dab, and I might do that later at the very end. And then I just go back to my little, my big actually, big flat brush. This one is a number 12. I don't want to pull too, too much, right? Because this is really wet on this side. So I've got thick, thick paint there. I just want to add and build up this beautiful sun effect. So I'm seeing a little bit of this light pink down here. I don't know if it's part of the water or if it's the beach, but I'm really led by color in my paintings and I kind of just, um, I don't really know how to explain it. I'll just see that I need to add that specific color. I kind of just know. I know what colors and it might be wrong to somebody else, but we all have our own preference for what we want to paint. Take that light pink color again. There we go. Okay, got a little bit of white, magenta, blue, kind of smoky plum color here that's quite pretty and I'm going to definitely need some more white. Just start dropping in some waterfalls. You can really use any color that you want for this. And just by taking a corner of my brush like this, I can change up the size and the width of my waterfalls. But there is another brush that I really like to use and specifically for waterfalls. I don't really know why this works so well for me. I just, something I can't really explain. You guys just have to try and see for yourselves. But I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo and a little bit of white. It's an angle brush and it's a number 10. And let's see, let me paint here. And I think it's like the bristles in this brush. I wish it would say they're very feather like, but they're not too soft. It's not at all like a, a watercolor. And look how we can kind of shake with your hand like this, shake with your wrist and get some movement. Um, it's not like a watercolor brush. It's not that soft. It's just uh, the perfect uh, texture. You can do with a lot of these uh, waterfall fantasy type paintings lately. I kind of go through stages and sorry if you guys think it's a bit repetitive. I try to change it up as often as I can, but kind of like whatever mood I'm in at the time, 
will really play a role in what I'm painting. So you can see here, you can add as many or as few waterfalls as you like. This is just the first stage here and I'm gonna be building on. I'm seeing as this painting is kind of coming to life, I'm seeing a little opening right here and I'll, I'll bring that to life a little bit more right now for you guys. Let's take a little bit of that burnt sienna as well and we'll create a warm glow with a little bit of cat yellow white. So right in here and I like archways so I'm going to do a little archway opening. I want my little entrances to be inviting so that's why I always add a little bit of light to them. And to make that stand out more, I'll definitely be adding a little bit more light in there. I'll, I'll even uh, probably add a bit of orange later on. I've got a beautiful neon orange that I'll show you guys after. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know which one it is. And I'm gonna go around with my dark color, black, burnt sienna, blue. I'm gonna go up, twist over and pull down. You can use any brush for this. It's just creating a shape. Well, a smaller brush. And we need maybe a little staircase that goes off. I think there we got a little little staircase. You guys know I like my staircases. And then I'll probably add a little bit of foliage in here as well after. But I like that little bit of a wave curl there. I think that's kind of fun. So I'm going to leave that. I want to add a little bit of a highlight. So I've worked most of the paint out of this brush. I can just slide in here to my light yellow mixture. If I've got a bit of blue on my brush, I don't, I don't really care about that. It's okay as long as it's going to show up here. I'm just hitting the top of that dark line, making that stand out from the light inside of here, right? Now what I'm going to be doing is going into um, some foliage and I'm using a one inch um, oval mop brush by Princeton. You can use any mop brush you want. You can use a round one. If you guys don't have um, this type of brush. I know a lot of you guys say, well, I don't have that brush. I can't paint this painting now. No, no, no. There's lots of different alternatives. Okay. You can create foliage with a filbert brush, uh, a fan brush. And, um, if you don't have those brushes, it'll just take a little bit more time, but you can use a smaller brush, like a round one. Um, you can use any brush. It's how you're using it that will create this. You have to stipple. So you have to tap, tap, tap. So yeah, it'll take longer. It'll be more work and you won't get as soft of an effect as you would with these brushes, but don't let that prevent you because you're always learning. And if anything, having the wrong brush is gonna make you develop your skills even better. So don't ever uh, think you can't join me if you don't have the same colors or brushes. There's always alternatives. If you're not sure which ones um, to use, then just leave a comment or question below. I'm always happy to help you guys out and answer you. I'm not gonna get my brush wet. And what I wanna do is First, take a little bit of cadmium yellow. We want to create a dark base for our foliage. So you only need a little bit of black and it's gonna dry darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of my cad yellow here. So I've got a nice deep dark forest green and I'm just gonna start adding a little bit here on the side. And I'll turn my brush just a little bit here, fit it in there, add a little bit there as well. Tap in again. Maybe we've got, hmm, I wanted to create like a little castle up here. I'm so torn because I kind of want to do a tree, but I'm also feeling like I want to have a castle up there. So I'm not really sure what to do. Maybe I could, I know, maybe I'll have a tree down here and we'll stick with the castle up there. Um, but you guys are welcome to do what you want. I'm just going to come in the sides here and add a little bit of foliage anyways, though. I like to have a lot of 
um, bushes and foliage and trees in my paintings. I think it's mostly because how much fun it is to create, especially with these brushes. So in between and amongst these waterfalls, we'll have these sweet little trees. And it's also kind of nice to have this around where our um, our castle is going to be, right? We want to have a nice little, maybe a little landing right up here for our little castle. I think that would look cute. And then where's the water coming from, right? We'll kind of figure that after, but I just want to have this little area here. I'll just do a few push-pull flick. So I know this is where my castle's going to be. Give us that kind of idea. And then down here, make sure your brush is loaded up. I'm going to tap in a little tree so it's going to kind of have this feel to it. If I kind of start coming in here, sort of a rounded very dramatic shape to my tree, helping to create a, a lot more mood in this painting, giving it some more character. We can add a little bit down here as well. We've got some grassy and mossy, rocky areas right in here. Okay, so I'm going to wash that brush out. And I'm going to take a clean one, same one. This one's a bit newer. You can see the paint's still on it. And I'm going to go in and add a highlight now. So clean, dry brush. A little bit of cadmium yellow. A little bit of white, just because it's going to dry a little bit darker. So I want to balance that out by adding a little bit of white. I'm going to concentrate on adding these highlights here where we've got that light source coming in and it would make sense, right? That it's just reflecting and maybe just a little hint of that inside. And then I'll take some more yellow, load my brush up again, maybe just a little bit more of the darker green that we have over there. And a little bit in here, maybe just a bit up here. This will, this is going to dry darker than this one because this one has less white in it. And I incorporated a little bit more of this olivey green color that we made. Just to kind of tone it here so it gradiates, right? So we've got light and then to dark. Um, but if you wanted, you could definitely add a highlight there. It's not, it's not going to wreck it. Okay, and I'm going to come over here. Hope you guys can, hope you guys can see this. Okay, I'm going to start adding a highlight from these sun rays. Kind of looks like a nighttime painting, but it is fantasy. I guess it could be it could be a moon if you wanted it to be. I'm going to add a little bit more white. See how I give it a tap on the end like that to get that nice shape back? So kind of want to it up here so I'm imagining that light is going to be hitting here and maybe just I like this really soft blended look that we have down at the base You can even use this brush to create some swoops like this to add to our 
waterfalls. Maybe there's like um, some moss and vines kind of in there as well. I don't know, a little something like this. I'm using a little filbert brush. This one's at number eight and I got it wet. I'm gonna start working on my um, castle up here and I'm gonna take my blue, black, and um, burnt sienna. I'm gonna get a little bit more water in there. It's a little bit dry. It's warm in my studio today. We've been having a heat wave here uh, on the coast of uh, uh, Vancouver Island. It's been really, really hot in lots of areas of Canada. So I'm just going to stumble in here and this is really for like getting my shape sort of and shadows for how I want my castle to be. I'm just making it up. I, I don't want to do anything too uh, detailed. I mean it's totally up to you guys. You can make yours as detailed as you like. This is a very simple way of painting one, just doing these lines, uh, all different sizes, change it up, right? Some are gonna be wider, some will be thinner, shorter, taller. And then you're gonna put uh, a little bit of white in your brush like this, just a little bit while your brush is still dirty. And then we can just start kind of pushing and tapping like this. Or if you push and tap, you can get more of um, that textured look of the brickwork or stonework that you might want your castle to have. But if it's really far away, you probably are not going to notice that anyways. It's not going to, it won't matter. So that's going to make some nice slate gray or greenish color. But you could definitely do your castle all black if you want, blue, white, make it your own. I'm going to go right into my black here and I'm going to go and add a little curved line on the top of these, what are they called? I'll call them pillars. I know that's probably not what they're called, but, and then I'm going to take white and I'm going to do just some little triangles for the top. A little bit more there on my brush. And again, you can use a round brush, flat brush, filbert like this, liner. Then you just want to add those little triangle tops. And maybe there's some in the back that we we can't see the rest of them, but they're there. So you could just add oh, all sorts of little things, little lines. You could start doing a little bit more on the inside. I'll take a little bit more of my dark mixture into my black here, go in between here. I 
and then maybe we've got an archway here. An archway like this. I like to think this little opening here takes you through some uh, rooms and some adventure and secret places along the way up to this castle on the top. And we can add a little bit of yellow and white. If you're careful, you don't need to wash, like you're just doing little dabs like this with a thick amount of paint. You don't need to wash your brush off. And we can have little windows. I like to have lights on when I'm painting houses or any kind of castle. I think it just makes it a lot more inviting. I'm going to go over here and add a tree trunk now. I'm going to use my number two round brush. Um, this one's small enough and narrow enough that I can use it as um, a liner brush too because it's quite pointy on the end. It's kind of a in between a round brush and a liner brush. So I got it wet, taking my black, blue, burnt sienna. I'm going to need more water than that. Roll it around, twist it, get it nice and pointy. And here we go. Let's just go right in here. Wiggle, wiggle. Add a few little branches here. Right down there. Twist and wiggle. Maybe we'll have another little another little secret opening right here. And who knows where that leads? It's fun to have that mystery, you know. Now, because this brush is really small, I can add a few uh, details here. I'm going to take a little bit of my turquoise. And I'm going to go kind of on the side on some of these windows. Maybe there's little shutters. Maybe add a little bit. I think that uh, black is still too wet when it's really thick and wet it's kind of hard to add those um, highlights and little details that we want so I'm gonna have to wait till that dries um, I'm gonna start incorporating some of my neon orange and this is uh, by Holbein now if you don't have neon a lot of you guys watching are like oh, I don't have that color there's no way I can paint this just use um, even Liquitex Basics. I've got cadmium orange hue. Anything bright orange. And if you don't have any orange, you can take red and yellow and even add a little bit of pink in there with white and you'll get a nice color. So I'm going to go back to my small filbert here, uh, number eight. And you can see I've got this really pretty neon orange. So I'll just take a little bit of this and I'm going to add some warmth in here and right in here as well. I want to have that light coming in from here kind of casting on the foliage outside and the stairs. So I'm just gonna add a little bit, oh, 
on the stairs like this, a little bit on the foliage, like I said. There we go. And you know what? Just because I'm going to look at that, I'm going to just even add a little bit of this right there, and it's so pretty. And I'll add a little bit down in the water as well. So this is starting to dry now. And I can really play this up a little bit more. Adding this light, soft peach and these pastel tones. It's really going to take this painting from feeling almost a little dark and scary. Now that's still wet, I think. I really want this to dry off so that I can start adding my sun rays over that. But I will take a little hair dryer here in a minute and hopefully speed up the drying process. I don't know why it's not dry yet because my studio is super warm. I guess it's because I applied it really thick there. Add a little bit, a little bit in here. Oh, that's pretty. A fuzzy peachy color. I like my fantasy paintings to have a little bit of um, mystery and be a little dark in some areas, but then uh, really balance it out with, oops, yeah, I accidentally picked up a little bit there. I'll, I'll work that out with a paintbrush. I want them to really invite me in and create a, like a safe haven amongst maybe some darkness around. I think that kind of represents um, a lot of things going on in our lives right now. I am not in a dark place at all while I'm saying that I should I should let you guys know. I'm actually really happy. If I wasn't happy, I wouldn't be able to be uh, painting here all the time and um, have all these ideas. So, but I think that it just, you know, in general, we're all fighting something, all going through something and that's the darkness. And then the light is whatever you find, comfort, love, and support and contentment in. Dot. Maybe I'll have some stars. I'll turn that into some stars and it's going to be too hard to kind of cover that up. So I'll just leave that. But I want to add a little bit more light. This, see how this is set in? It's a little bit dark. So I'm just going to add, just scoop up a little bit of this peachy color and add a little bit more in there. Maybe got a little window. Maybe there's some areas in there. And in here as well see once you start something ideas just start flowing that can't happen if you're working from a reference photo it's totally different and nothing's right or wrong they're both fine but this if you guys are interested in in painting this way and really um getting into your um own creativity, discovering what you can paint without looking at anything. I hope that this brings you some inspiration, gives you a new and fresh way of creating and being a happy painter. My videos can show you a lot of techniques and tips and offer some motivation. But I know that if you try to copy someone else's artwork, we're not meant to do that. We're meant to be unique and create our own stuff. So it can be really frustrating. And I don't mind at all if you guys want to try and copy my work. 
but I just want you to know that it's different when you're making your own stuff from your imagination. You'll become very fulfilled and it'll be hard for you to ever go back and paint another way once you get a taste for creating intuitively like this. So I think um, I'm going to add a few little tree branches and tree trunks in here. Back to my little round brush, same color as Burnt Sienna, water and a little bit of black. Twist and roll my brush to get it nice and tight. And just a few, we'll have that tree going right in front of those little strings of waterfalls. And I like it when the, the roots just kind of spill over the edge like that. I love that look. Add a little bit right under here. And where else could we add some? Maybe a bit of a highlight. Let's take our burnt sienna and burnt sienna and see if that is enough. I think that is really enough of a highlight there. It shows up and it's not too, too bright because the light's not going to be the same everywhere. So you don't want to over highlight everything in your painting. So this is kind of a nice in between, right? It'll make things stand out. And burnt sienna is such a beautiful, rich color. I think it's really undervalued and underused in paintings. Now, if you guys do decide to paint this one today, you can share your versions on uh, my Facebook group. It's Joni Young Art Acrylic Painting Tutorials. Is it or is it YouTube Tutorials? Anyways, you'll find it. And I'll also leave a link below. But this painting isn't done. I, I've got a lot of ideas. And... I want to add some flowers somewhere. I want to add a little bit more up here. I'm just gonna, I, oh, I still got a little bit of blue in there. I thought it was all dried. So I can take a little bit of blue, white. I'm gonna turn my brush this way. Carefully get in here, push, and then let off. Push and let off to make it nice and skinny on top. And with these, I think they're called turrets. You can make them as narrow or as wide as you want them to be. It, you really can't go wrong. There's so many different ways to paint a little fantasy castle. I was, uh, I've been watching one of my favorite shows. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Merlin. Anyways, I am watching it again for like the 10th time, just because I love it so much. And I think I kind of just love that magical, anything magical, but I really, really love that show. So if you guys are into stuff like that, let me know in the comments, anything like Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings, all that kind of stuff I love. It really, really kind of invokes my imagination. So, I'm just going to add a little bit of black. A little bit of a base underneath that one and a little bit of shadow with a little bit of black here in burnt sienna just to sort of outline and define my windows and underneath these little triangle turrets just 
make everything stand out a little bit more. And it is a fantasy, but I want to make some sort of sense of where this waterfall is coming from. So let's see. I'm going to go back to my angle brush. If I can find it. There we go. Good thing I have two. So you're going to want to get that wet again. And let's see. Let's. This is a good color. We'll stick with this phthalo blue and a little bit of white. So maybe, maybe I've got... Some dropping from up here into here and it comes down right there And I'm going to take a little bit more of this blue or white. And just keep going here. Those little trickles coming down. I want to take a little bit of that orange now with my white. And maybe I can maybe I can get away with adding a little bit here. Oh well, that's kind of pretty, isn't it? Gotta be careful. I said I was gonna dry this off first. And a little bit down here. A little bit more turquoise. I've still got a little bit of that peach in there. Kind of just cut in like a knife with it. Get all of that paint out of my brush, dry it off, soften this. I'm just going to sort of scumble a little bit of that off, make it look kind of hazy. And then, let's see here. Got a little dot right there I didn't need to happen, so I'll just cover that up. 
Um, I said I wanted to have some flowers, so we could go ahead and do that. A uh, little bit more light here. Lots of little, little secret windows. take a little bit of white in the middle and just go right inside make that nice and bright and then a little flick and then add a little highlight little soft shine from some of these sun rays. Just a little bit of that white peachy color. And we could have a little um, flag as well. Just do a skinny line like this. Little flag. Maybe we'll put a little bit of black in there. I said I was going to do some flowers uh, as well as a few little stars. So we'll just take that peachy, fuzzy color, fuzzy peach color, I mean. <laughs> You guys know what I mean. Try a little bit of turquoise here. Make some different ones. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. So I'm going to need a smaller brush. Now this is a uh, 10, a number 10 uh, liner brush. So get it wet, get a little bit of white, and we'll choose just a few of these. I'll choose this one here, do a little dab, pull, flick. We'll make a little twinkling star here. Little wishing star. Finish it off with a little dab in the center. Let me just one. Look a little bit more right here and just a little bit more here just to kind of balance that out. Take a little bit of black and an outline some of these windows before I add my flowers. And it's funny because I had a rainbow in mind for this painting, but I really don't see that happening. Um, there's just not enough room. But I did do a big painting yesterday with a rainbow in it. And if you guys want to check that out, it is on Patreon right now. But by the time you're seeing this one, it will probably be on my channel. Um, I've got quite a few rainbow uh, paintings. I love rainbows. 
And I've got some really great techniques to, to make it easy to paint or to make them easy to paint. So you guys will want to check that out for sure. Um, but I'm definitely after them finish this one. I'm going to get started on a, another rainbow one, I think. Yeah, let's just have a little bit more right there. Okay, so time for some flowers. I'm thinking I've been using, where is it? And yeah, my Holbein Neon Rose. I'm almost out of this one too. I want to use my mini uh, little Filbert. Filbert slash mop brush. See this? So these really pretty iridescent crystal handled uh, brushes are actually makeup brushes and I get these on Amazon. They're amazing. Under 20 bucks gets you a big set of them, all different sizes. And uh, I really recommend, don't underestimate the use of <laughs> a makeup brush, guys. So I'm going to just tap in. I just tap in a little scoop there on the end. Oh, that's so pretty. I might even add a little bit of, of this into the sky after. Where do we want our flowers to be? Maybe a little entrance right in here. Maybe we've got some gorgeous neon rose, roses, <laughs> right here on either side. And maybe we've got a little bit, just a little bit left on my brush here. I just kind of pull and add that into some of the waterfalls because I think that's pretty to layer colors. And, um, oh, a little highlight. So let's add a little bit of white to that. So just taking a little bit, whoops, I didn't want turquoise. Uh, oh yeah, just be careful. You've got lots of colors on your palette like this that you don't get your colors all mixed up. I think I want to have this kind of trailing. Kind of just pull and flick a little bit to that water. See, I really, really love this rose and I know that I need to add some of this in here. So, and this is going to just tie this painting all together. And then I think this painting will be all done. Here. I accidentally went over the white, but I love that. It looks like a shooting star. I love it when accidents, little accidents, happy accidents like that happen. I just don't know why, but I feel like I need a little bit of this layered over. Part of the tree trunk okay so this painting is all done i really enjoyed this one and i'm glad i got to share it with you guys i'll see you next time in another video bye